here in St. Louis at Worldwide Technologies World Headquarters, and we're at the Advanced Technology Center. Specifically, we're inside the Solution Showcase in the Advanced Technology Center and talking about how Intel and Worldwide Technology are affecting service provider networks. Um, I'm with Alex from Intel. Alex, thanks for being here. Um, so, first of all, uh, you know, how is Intel involved in um, the service provider value chain when it's, uh, you know, helping uh, service providers become uh, edge ready, you know, getting that edge infrastructure built and uh, becoming uh, ready for 5G networks? Yeah, I would say uh, Intel is foundational to 5G and, and actually um, we believe that 5G runs on Intel. Let me, let me expand on that. Um, Intel provides a number of technology building blocks uh, into the network infrastructure uh, across the core network, the edge, and into the radio access network. Um, we have a number of building blocks from our uh, world-class CPUs to system on chips, SOCs, to FPGAs, to custom uh, designed uh, ASICs. Um, in the context of 5G, we announced last year that we're working with uh, Nokia and Ericsson to have our building blocks inside their 5G base stations as they deploy the first wave of 5G networks. Now, 5G is actually evolving, and the next area of transition in 5G beyond the radio access network uh, is uh, the ever-critical edge, network edge, as well as the core network. And Intel has been working with service providers for the past decade now on transitioning their networks from proprietary, vertically integrated, purpose-built appliances to open, um, disaggregated hardware and software uh, systems running their critical workloads on communication server technology. So service providers can take advantage of the economics of the data center uh, as these economics get translated to uh, the networks. Um, and so, um, in that regard, um, Intel is really, in the context of edge computing and 5G, um, driving um, open interfaces to disaggregate some of these solutions, um, working with a number of ecosystem uh, players, including worldwide technologies, and, and just a, a broad number of ecosystem vendors, both on the software and the hardware side, as we, as we look at these um, disaggregated solutions and then delivering just the, the best possible uh, performances on these communication servers that are based on, on, on Intel technologies. Um, and so, you know, from in that regard, as the 5G network gets built out, um, you know, using Intel as, as a foundational base with a, a number of ecosystem uh, solutions coming in from, um, from the industry, um, you know, we actually help service providers in that regard transition from their LTE 3G networks over to a world-class 5G network. Excellent, um, thanks for that. How, uh, let's dig into that ecosystem a little bit. How has Intel worked with worldwide technology in providing uh, technology and uh, uh, you know this 5G readiness for service providers? What's great about what worldwide technology offers is as we look at disaggregating and then putting together this new aggregated model um, in, in, a, in an open environment um, with their core competencies in the advanced technology center in which we're, we're sitting today, uh, they're able to actually take some of these um, different stacks from different vendors, uh, test these stacks to make sure that they work, validate them, and then ultimately as these stacks get proven out, they can transition over to their um, integration centers where they actually build the solutions for the service providers and then help the commercial deployment um, into the different locations, the different workloads, and ultimately different geographies for these service providers. So it's, it's, it's a phenomenal value for service providers to be able to transition um, from you know, what was a, a, a closed proprietary system to now this infrastructure that 5G is accelerating, fully virtualized, software-defined, cloud-native, that, that really runs across a different, a different number of stacks, uh, and worldwide technology is, is you know, in the middle of it, being able to put together the solutions that service providers need. Excellent. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, Intel Select Solutions. Um, mm -hmm. What is Intel Select Solutions, and more importantly, who is it for? Sure. Yeah, Intel Select Solutions, uh, think of it as a, as a, as, as a recipe um, and, uh, and a methodology. 
So, um, you know, one of the concerns, that we, as we just uh, spoke about, is when we put together um, and you have a, a different uh, number of solutions to choose from in the ecosystem, you want to make sure that these solutions work well together. So as you choose um, uh, a software application with a network function, with a middleware layer, with hardware from different vendors, you want to make sure that these solutions actually come together and work well, uh, as they theoretically should be on paper. And so what um, Intel does is um, we work with our ecosystem partners to put together a recipe, and we call it a reference design, if you will, um, with uh, a specific configuration uh, targeted at specific workloads. So whether it's a uh, universal CPE mm -hmm. or uh, what we call a universal forwarding plane for packet processing to um, a, uh, a BNG, uh, for example, we take specific ingredients uh, following a specific configuration. We test and we validate them. And so uh, our customers and our partners have the peace of mind that these solutions are gonna work together. These components are gonna work together right. in a fully optimized fashion that they know that they're gonna get the very best performance um, using Intel as a, as, as a foundational building block across the, uh, the entire solution from hardware to, so to system to software. Um, and so these solutions can then get implemented and really um, provides uh, ease, of, um, ease of mind uh, and, and time to market from a deployment perspective. Cuts down you know, the, the validation time, the testing time, and deployment time. So these are recipes that we put together and make available to uh, our partners and ultimately to service providers. Okay, and to complete the picture, how is worldwide technology and involved with Intel in both the, the validation and the delivery of Intel Select Solutions? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Intel is an underlying building block supplier. Um, and so we do some testing and validation of configurations. But now when it comes to real world deployments, this is where WWT comes into play, where they're actually able to take these Intel Select Solutions, and they're a key partner of us in this, in this regard, uh, they're able to, uh, to do the integration of these solutions, replicate these setups in the Advanced Technology Center. And then again, we, we spoke about this a little bit earlier. Service providers, there isn't a one size fit all. So, right. um, you know, WWT can actually take the components that service providers want, you know, and do the uh, integration and the testing in their Advanced Technology Centers, and then critically take that out of the labs and then build these solutions and actually help the service providers with their deployments. One of the things that, that I'm sort of noticing in the industry is, is so we've gone from these, um, you know, uh, hardware-based um, sort of proprietary solutions and now we're, as we're moving into faster, more advanced technology, we, we've disaggregated all the pieces of that and yeah. now we're pulling it all back together. Yes. What's the difference really in, in the service provider's mind from this the, the sort of the old way of doing things to this new way of, uh, uh, of, uh, of consuming these formerly, you know, piece parts, uh, these disaggregated solutions, but, but put back together by, uh, you know, a company like Worldwide Technology using Intel's uh, select solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difference is that in the, in the um, what we call the legacy environment, mm -hmm. Um, hardware and software uh, tended to be uh, aggregated, right, in a black box. Okay. And so you couldn't get any innovation, um, you know, if you wanted it to roll out a new service, for example, or if you wanted to roll out a new technology, a hardware capability, or a, a new application, you were solely dependent on a single vendor and a timeline to, to, to drive innovation of anything. This was essentially a black box, right? right? And it worked for some service providers. But uh, really, it inhibits the, the world that we live in today that is very much cloud-driven, cloud-native. Services come and go extremely quickly. And so when um, companies like uh, Worldwide Technology can actually help with, the, with not so much the, the disaggregation, but now the re-aggregation of a horizontal model where you can innovate at, at different layers, whether it's at the service layer, whether it's at the network function layer, the middleware layer, the hardware layer, Service providers can now actually not just say from a TCO perspective, a total cost of ownership perspective, but as they drive time to market and innovation, they can take components of that, of, that, of their solution, revalidate the, whichever component they want to, right. Right, working with worldwide technologies, you're right, again, in starting in their ATCs, 
uh, and then and then roll out these uh, from a much quicker perspective than they actual, uh, actually otherwise would, relying on the previous vendor, and also looking at you know how they practice and, and their practices relative to planning and rolling out new services. It significantly cuts down their time to market for services rollout. Okay, Alex, thanks so much for helping me understand more about Intel's foundation uh, in, in 5G and in edge computing, and also uh, the work you're doing with Intel Solutions and Worldwide Technologies. It's been a, a really interesting conversation. It's my pleasure, Thank thanks. You.